Welcome to our worship for the fourth Sunday in Advent in the year of the demon virus. We're back to streaming and, and taping and because of COVID restrictions and just trying to keep everybody as safe as possible in the community. So let us anticipate with joy the coming of Christmas soon, fourth Sunday. We start by lighting the Advent wreath. Joy to the world. This then is the culmination of our years of waiting. We have lit the candles of hope, peace, and love. In the glow of their light, we feel the warmth of deep and quiet joy. Joy to the world, our Savior reigns. Let us our song employ. Let us sing to the glory of God. Let us sing in the name of Christ, who offers us hope in the prison of despair, peace in the chaos of life, God's love, graciously, silently, vulnerably offered, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Let us now light the candles of hope, peace, love, and joy. Behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us take a moment of silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please pray with me the jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness, for I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. 
My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike him down, strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading comes from 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But at that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people of Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of God of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more. And formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we can read the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading comes from Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings that is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, whom be the glory forever. Amen. And now let's read the Song of Mary, which is Luke 1, 46 to 55. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. 
The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me the Te Deum Laudamus. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory, we believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with all your saints to glory everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we get to talk about dwelling places. Where is the dwelling place of God? It's amazing that we get to talk about houses and dwellings and homes because for the last many months we've been watching a huge dwelling place go up right next to the chapel. 
going to build 80 dwelling places for new residents, which will open soon. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Sometimes it's noisy. It's been hot. It's been cold. The construction has gone on. Where is the dwelling place of God? In the ancient times, God's dwelling place with his people was in a tent. Out in wherever the people were, in the tent of meeting, in the tabernacle, was God's dwelling place. And King David, as we heard in 2 Samuel, was determined that just as he had now a dwelling place that was more permanent, that he would build a more permanent dwelling place for God. And it sounded wonderful until God told Nathan the prophet, it's not for David to do. I don't need this now. Later, the temple was built out of cedar by David's son, Solomon, and thousands of workers. In the New Testament era, the dwelling place of God became us. Emmanuel, our Christmas gift is God dwelling with us. Emmanuel, God with us. The dwelling place of God is now within us. Where is the light of Christ to be seen? In every Christian. How did that come to be? Well, we heard in the sixth month that the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her what God was going to do. And through her faith, and through her obedience, and through her saying yes to God, she conceived, bore a son, they named him Jesus, our Messiah. And so the dwelling place of God is no longer in a tent, but it's within us, in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. Now that first Christmas that we're going to talk about in a few days was not an ideal thing. It was a chaotic time. Mary was in the midst of planning a wedding. And every bride knows how stressful that is. And every groom too. In our era, of course, grooms have been told many times and we've been trained, you know, get out of the way, show up on time, do what's needed and get out of the bride's way the rest of the time. There's stress involved in a wedding. And in the middle of that, the angel Gabriel appeared and said, Hail, O favored one. You can only imagine, as I do, what did that do to Mary? In the midst of all that stress, the angel Gabriel says, You're going to be a mom. You have been chosen out of every woman who will ever live to bear the Messiah. How is that going to happen? Through the Holy Spirit, through the power of God. Nothing is impossible to God. We must remember that. Nothing is impossible to God. And what was required of Mary? Simply to say yes to God's plan, not just for her, but for all of us. Miracles happen when we say yes to God. May, the, may God always take our yes. Now, I've never had God come to me and say, let's just go have a cup of coffee and relax today. When the angel of the Lord comes and says, hail, O favored one, something big is going to happen. Our credit, our comfort zone is about to be vaporized, and we are going to do amazing, miraculous things with God. And it's going to be great. Here this year, our Advent has been anything but routine. We're finishing up a year that we'd rather not ever live again. Someone said recently when they were given some bad news, I didn't think I could hate this year any more than I do. But now I do. We're so ready for this year to be over. But here's the thing. That first Christmas wasn't perfect either. And there were a lot of things that went on in that first century that nobody wanted to relive ever. And it wasn't that God came into a perfect world. 
nor will he this year. I think we'd all agree the world is not a perfect place right now, and it's certainly not what we want. The year of the demon virus will not be lamented when it's over. Just hope that the virus ends soon, too. We'd love to have that in the rearview mirror. Why I'm saying this is simply to say this. When we say yes to God, miraculous things happen. One of the great miracles of this year, when God opens our eyes so that we can see it, is that God has walked with us each step of the way through this past year, through the pandemic, through everything that's happened that maybe we don't like in our lives and in the world around us, God has been present. God's dwelling place is within us. And so wherever we are, wherever there's a believing Christian, where two or three gather, God will be in their midst. We have that promise, and we know it to be true. And so we know that there is nothing God cannot do or overcome. More importantly, God walks with us through those difficult times. And he's walking with us now. As we finish up the season of Advent and move towards the season of Christmas in just a few days, God's perfect love will again symbolically enter an imperfect world. That's the magic of Christmas. Not that the world is perfect, but that God's perfect love is with us. The dwelling place of God is within us. Amen. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope and we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Grant us, O Lord, a sense of your comforting presence today for our residents and staff. Our community is still dealing with uncertainty, anxiety, and maybe holiday depression during this time. We know that your perfect love casts out all fear and brings a peace that passes human understanding. We ask that you grant us that peace and wisdom today. We pray that still hopes will continue to be a haven of peace and health of body, mind, and spirit for all, and a beacon of hope for our community and our world. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for those on our chapel prayer list. We pray for the repose of the soul of Rose Royals and Melinda Roof. From our, we pray for the health and the safety of Joanne Brooks, Marcine Thompson, Daphne Allen, Dale Pedrick, Nancy Malding, Rod Hull, Jean Rogers, Effie Phillips, Harry and Sarah Parker, Wally Benke, Mike Bonner, Mary Kynard, Norma Perkins, Ethel Louder, Retta Miller, Emma Byers, Peggy Parks, Jackie Williams, Bill Webb, Nancy Summers, Richard and Annie Louise Blinko, Daryl Walker, Brian Moody, Margaret Jenkins, James, and all those suffering from the virus or from depression during this year. We pray for the safety of our military, remembering especially Edward and Katie Cloyd, Brian Dugan, Ricky Ayers, and Steve Richardson. And we celebrate birthdays this coming week of Kermit King, Jim Brady, Helen Duran, Clyde Dornbush, Clyde Dornbush, and Graham Inman. Pray the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church 
and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.